This video is about a 1970s era Italian made oscilloscope that I got for free. It is in good condition. However, the bad news is that it doesn't work. I tried to turn it on once and I got no trace, but the CRT filament was turning on. And after that, next time I turned it on, I got sparks down there when, when there are those capacitors. And uh, a bad smell. So we'll try to turn it on again and see what happens. Let's see. Oh, I got a circuit breaker out. It appears it was an earth in fault. So this thing is apparently getting worse every time I turn it on. First time not race, second time sparks, and third time circuit breaker. I'm getting some strange readings between Phase or neutral and ground. Looks like it's increasing. Feels like a capacitor. The sparks were coming from somewhere in this side of the circuit. That's the power supply board. And uh, I actually found a schematic for this. Which is this one. And uh, if you have a look at the power supply, you see that with those two diodes. This capacitor and those two capacitors are a voltage doubler. That's another voltage doubler, and that's a third voltage doubler. So this block, which corresponds to all of those capacitors, it's a voltage tripler. It starts from a secondary tap of the power supply and generates. A, well, I don't know what kind of voltage is this, but here it's a 10, 180 volt. Zener diodes, so it's a, this is a, a thousand eight hundred volts. So it's probably two thousand or something volts in here, and this part was working. Well, first of all, we already see that there's some kind of bad practice here, because uh, these two, two capacitors are in series, these two capacitors are in series, these in series, and this we have three capacitors in series with no balancing resistors between them. So if something gets older and its dielectric starts to break down somehow, then it uh, shorts and all of the voltage goes to the other capacitor, which fails, and then the first one fails as well. So I think all those capacitors should be considered bad, should be replaced. I'm still not sure what caused the ground fault, because from this side of the primary side, we don't have any capacitor between live and neutral and ground. Now, the boring thing is that all of those connections are soldered, and there appears to, to be no easy way to leave this board without undoing the connection. Also, this resistor has been replaced, it's not new. It's been soldered in place of another resistor, and it's burnt. That's not a good sign. But I guess I'll have to desolder the connections, replace as much capacitor as I can, so that I don't have to do it all over again, and then try again. Well, that's not a good news. From this side, we're inside, below the power supply board, and the wires are somehow covered in some corrosion. And the insulation is flaking off. Bad news. I've desoldered the cable along this side and lifted the board. However, if you look down here, yeah, I don't know if you can see, but the insulation of the transformer wires is somehow flaking off. Some are also badly corroded. I don't know, I can plastic and corrode like this. It did. I tried to put some heat shrink to the wires. See how, how bad are those wires. And then I tried to connect it to the power with all of the secondaries cut off to see if it would trip the breaker. It did not trip the breaker, but I heard a loud pop. And it was coming from the transformer. So, I think this is beyond repairable. Well, more news. Apparently, 
The pop didn't came from the transformer, it came from the fuse. The primary side fuse, half an amp, blown. It isn't getting any much better. Probably transformer is shorter somewhere. Yeah, who knows where. And if the transformer is broken, this thing is unrepairable. So my news. I changed the fuse, even with a lower amp value, because I didn't have an alpha amp fuse. I used a 315 milliamp fuse, and it is not blowing. I could measure the voltage out of every tap of the transformer, and everything seems fine. Here it is, almost fully recapped, at least uh, the power supply board. And now, it's time to try and turn it on. And see if it works. No sparks, that's a good sign. But also nothing on screen. Hmm, not looking good. Oh wait, and we have a dot. Great. Yes, focus is working. Mm. Mm. Trace. Much better. I've connected the input calibration voltage and uh, it's fine. I mean, it's even it's even calibrated as half a volt by centimeter. That's one volt per centimeter. It's it's perfect. Well, we still have a problem. Watch this. If I turn it on, no issue. See. However, if I turn it off. Flip the socket from the other side and trying to turn it on. Yeah, ground fault. Well, to try and fix the problem, I removed the entire transformer, and as you can see, it is not in good shape. Those are the wires, and this is supposed to be the insulation. However, it crumbles with pliers. Yeah, see? Falls off. We are going to add the heat shrink also to the primary wires and see if this is enough to fix the problem. These days we complain a lot about the lack of safety standards in Chinese products, but our products were much better back then. Those flimsy wires carry mains voltage and go in a bundle with low voltage side wires. Their insulation doesn't seem to be rated for 220 volts, so I'll replace them with this cable, which seems more suited. And now it's time to solder back the wires to the power supply board for the second time, hopefully the last one.
have easily been applied. Now a fully insulated cable is used for this. It goes to here, to here, and the transformer isolation is all new. This has actually changed a lot of things. Now the resistance between the ground and here is opened. A good way to test an analog oscilloscope is with oscilloscope music, which is a kind of music where the two stereo channels are connected to the oscilloscope in XY mode and is made to sound and look good at the same time. This music is from Java Bean Fenderson. Check out his YouTube channel for more. Thank <laughs> you.